We're now going to move to a different topic, which is a topic of averages. Now, you know that the average, let's say, of a set of numbers uh, 2, 3, 4, the average is 2 plus 3 plus 4 divided by uh, 3. I didn't write the plus sign very well. Uh, we're here concerned with a different type of average, and so if you look at the first graph that I drew, the horizontal axis is hours spent studying for an exam. The vertical axis is exam score. Now this isn't an exam in this class, this is just a fictional example. The idea is that if, if the student spent no hours studying for the exam, they would get 40 points. If they spent two hours studying, they would get 70 points. Four hours studying, they'd get 90 points. Six hours studying, they get 100 points. And if they study for more than six hours, they would stay at 100 points. And the question is, what is the payoff in terms of points per hour for studying? Suppose you studied for two hours. And that two hours, at the two hour mark, you'd get 70 points. And so the average points per hour would be 70 divided by 2, which is 35 points per hour. And we can actually calculate the uh, the rest of these in a similar manner. The number of hours that we're going to consider, number of hours, is 0, 2, 4, and 6. And the average points per hour is the following. So uh, for two hours, we already got 35 points per hour. For four hours, the payoff is, I mean, the, the, the total number of points that you score is 90. So that's 90 divided by 4, and that works out to be 22 and a half. And for six, you get 100, so that's 100 divided by 6, and 100 divided by 6 is 16 and 2 thirds. Now, how about zero hours? Well, the points per hour, you you get 40 points from no hour studying, and so that's equal to plus infinity. The question is, what if we didn't have any numbers? How could we get uh, some idea of of what's going on if we didn't have any numbers? Let's look at the bottom graph first. The bottom graph is actually going to be the average points per hour. And we can fill it in because you have the table on the right-hand side. At zero, the average, that zero hour spent studying for an exam, so with the, the, the uh, horizontal axis of zero, we have infinity, which of course I, I can't draw. At 2, we have 35. Let's arbitrarily put 35 here. At 4, we have 22 and a half, which is roughly, I'd say, here. I'm just approximating. At 6, we have 16 and 2 thirds, which is roughly here. So we connect the dots, you get something like this. Some sort of curve, some sort of curve like that.
Now the question is, how could we arrive at this sort of shape if we didn't have any numbers? And to do that, we're going to use a similar kind of graphical technique to what we used for for um, slopes, but it's not going to be the same. So I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use I'm going to use orange. And what we're going to do is to draw not a tangent line. So for averages, you don't draw tangent lines. Instead, you draw lines from the origin which is the zero zero point to the function. So I'm not going to be drawing any tangent lines. By lines from the origin to the function, let me illustrate what I mean. I'll start with the value two hours spent studying. If you spent two hours studying, then I'm talking about this line from the origin I'm sorry to the value of the function like that. And then you ask yourself what's the slope of that line? Well since we do actually have numbers here we can calculate it. The slope is rise over run. Well the rise is 70 the run is 2, 70 over 2 is 35, and that's what we had over here, 70 over 2 is 35. So indeed the slope of the orange line that I drew on the graph is the average value of the function. Let me say that again. The slope of the orange line is the average value of the function. Now, I did use the word slope in there, and slope is involved in this calculation, but it's not a tangent line to the function. I didn't draw any tangent lines. Okay, so in any case, if uh, you spent two hours studying for an exam, the slope of the orange line is 35, and you'd get, you get that point there. What if you spent four hours studying? Well, then you get a different orange line. Sorry. What's the slope of that second orange line? It's the rise, which is 90, over the run, which is 4. Well, 90 divided by 4 is 22 and a half, which is, which is what we had over here. Yeah. 22 and a half. So that's the way you could generate this point. If you spent six hours studying, then the lines from the origin to the function, what I wrote over here, draw lines from the origin to the function. So the lines from the origin to the function look like this. Sorry, at some point I will learn not to press so hard. And then you ask yourself, what's the slope of that line? Maybe I should write that over here on the right-hand side. So under averages, I said, don't draw tangent lines. Instead, draw lines from the origin to the function. I'll say, then find the slope of the line you drew. So you spend six hours studying, yeah, the rise is 100, the run is 6, 100 divided by 6 is 16 and 2 thirds, which is what we had over here, and therefore what, uh, what generates that point. Now suppose we had no numbers. Oh, let's, let's do 0. So at 0, again you follow the same rule, you draw lines from the origin to the function. So you start at the origin, which is the 0, 0 point, and you draw lines to the function, and that's uh, 
that's this line here, and of course the slope there is is infinity. So that's what we had over here in the table. We had an infinite an infinite slope. So that's good. What could we say if we had no numbers? Well, what could we what we could say if we had no numbers is certainly that as you go from left to right, the slopes get flatter. They start out at infinity, then they get flatter and flatter and flatter. And starting out at an infinity way up here and then getting flatter and flatter and flatter would indeed generate something like infinity and something less and something less and something less. So you could get the same shape on the bottom as, as, as we generated with the numbers even if we didn't have any numbers. So that's the way to get to get the averages. We will come back to to this graph and talk about it some more next time.